So hello, hello, my name is Graham White. I'm a digital account manager here at Practice Promotions. Uh, I've been part of the Practice Promotions team since January, 2020, so right before COVID. Um, but I've been working in marketing and marketing for small businesses since 2015. Uh, and I've got a special knack for helping businesses and business owners utilizing both the existing assets uh, within their cl clinic and in their community uh, to, to help in their marketing. Um, and now don't forget, if you're part of our uh, Practice Promotions Insider Circle Facebook group, uh, we have uh, the, the Amazon gift card. Uh, you, the winner will be announced at the end of this uh, call. Uh, if you're on this call and are feeling the pressure, don't worry. You don't have to be on the call to receive it in case something comes up. Life happens, I know. Um, uh, but yeah, and so the way that this call will kind of be structured is I'm going to set the stage first and kind of make some key points into to assist in expanding your marketing. Um, uh, before then we end with uh, kind of questions and kind of uh, just finalizations. Um, so uh, before I get to the nitty gritty of the benefits of going outside your marketing bubble, I wanna start by highlighting a common conversation that I have with my clients, mainly to set the stage and to make sure we're all on the same page uh, and the same mindset of how to go into, how to think about uh, kind of popping your, your, uh, your marketing bubble. So common question I always get, um, uh, why should I care about creating my own content? Um, now, this, this is mainly going to be framed in the context of social media, but it does apply to everything that we do here at Practice Motions. if you do anything on the website, and if you do have a newsletter. Um, custom content in general is something that you should very think ha hard and strongly about. Um, this example will mainly be framed around social media. Uh, and the biggest thing to keep in mind with social media content is this, uh, is that people are not going to care about your business if you're only talking about your business. Uh, that is not why people use social media. Think to yourself, why do people use social media in the first place? And it all, all boils down to this very simple concept of the human connection. And you're like, okay, all right. But uh, I thought Practice Promotions takes care of all of my social media content. Um, short answer for that is, of course, no. Uh, if you're an Ultimate or Platinum client, our team does provide four social media posts each month for your business. Um, but if that's all you're relying on, then you're not gonna get far, far in the realm of social media marketing. Uh, the content that my team at Practice Emotions provides uh, is designed with a very specific uh, and intentional purpose, is to inform new potential patients about all the wonderful therapies you offer and the conditions that you treat. It isn't really aimed at the kind of human connection aspect of social media, but that's by design. Um, it's designed to be supplementary content designed to inform others um, uh, and to ideally go alongside um, your, your content, uh, that you provide that has a kind of human connection. Uh, I lovingly call it the one, two punch combo. We provide the kind of, uh, the kind of professional, um, uh, the, the kind of professional clout that shows that you're a player in the industry and ideally alongside your content, uh, of things in house. And we'll go into that in detail in a moment, uh, to really get a sense, uh, to, of you being a contender in the social media space. We, we help the two kind of facets of, of content assist each other in this regard. Um, uh, with that said, if you, oh, with that said, if you uh, aren't using social media to actually connect with people, then you can't expect much in return. Social media isn't a passive space where you set it and forget it. You need to be able to engage with your followers on a regular basis if you want an impactful presence. Uh, and then that always, this kind of conversation always leads to this kind of, uh, kind of roadblock where I don't have time to commit to full social media engagement. Does this mean I shouldn't bother? No, of course not. Now, once your mindset is aimed at, you know, getting your content to connect with others on that human interpersonal level, it's, it can be a daunting task to ascend to that level of engagement that you feel like you need to be at. Um, it's very common for overwhelm to set in at this stage. And I've had clients who definitely lose interest over creating their own content because they feel like they can't do it right. Uh, like they can't, they don't have time. They're kind of stretched too thin. Uh, and oftentimes the person doing the marketing is also the owner who is also a therapist who also has all the admin work to do. And the person at the front desk is sick. Like I totally get it. There's a lot going on, but content creation doesn't have to be a huge beast and burden. Uh, if, if you kind of adapt around that, um, uh, and so when I do hear these types of questions, um, I like this kind of question, I like to throw some, some questions back at them. Um, are you the only person involved in your marketing at your, at your company? Uh, and, uh, do you know what you would post about if you had the time? Uh, so like, if you did have the time, do you actually know what noise you'd be making there on the internet? Uh, and then, um, do you understand that you're not going to get results from the social media platforms if you don't figure out a way to get involved, to find time or to adapt? 
uh, or use utilize your time more effectively to to have a presence in social media. Uh, now, these questions that I ask them usually lead to my first point that I'm uh, that I recommend my clients taking in order to get more involved with their custom content. Many hands make less work. Um, chances are you aren't the only person who works at your company, uh, and content creation doesn't have to be in your shoulders entirely. Um, Short and sweet, lighten your workload by delegating content creation duties to your team. And now content creation is such a vague term, I know. Uh, in this context, it could be just as simple as, hey, take a picture. Hey, can you, uh, like, it could be a uh, selfie. It could be something, uh, it doesn't have to be an elaborate post. It doesn't have to be really, you know, convoluted and complex with lots of calls to action. Sometimes short and sweet is really effective, especially in the world of social media. Um, and uh, and so obviously, depending on the size of your team and how much responsibility slash free time your other teammates have, you know, this kind of delegation can be aimed at just getting them to provide you pictures to then schedule out and make it a little easier for you. If that's, you know, if that takes uh, off some, some stress off your plate uh, or even getting them to post the content themselves if they have access to your social media uh, accounts. Um, so just some suggestions here. Uh, if you're working within a team, uh, assign a different day of the week to different people on your team. So let's say. You have a team of uh, you and three other uh, therapists say, all right, you're Mondays, you're Tuesdays, and I'll be Fridays. Uh, and then practice motions posts on Thursday. So we'll skip Wednesday, day for rest. Uh, and so in this, in this example, um, everyone knows, okay, one day a week, I have to post something or provide a picture uh, and kind of at least push the needle forward in the realm of social media. That's a good way of making it more bite-sized, more approachable, and also gives people a sense of responsibility and cohesiveness within your company. Um, another suggestion, of course, is plan ahead. Uh, if this becomes a routine and your team knows that they're responsible, uh, what they're responsible for ahead of time, they're going to be less likely to forget or be too busy to actually talk, to follow through and provide the content. Um, and uh, it, it kind of helps prevent the, oh my gosh, we don't have anything to post on social media and it's four o'clock. What do we do? You know, it kind of prevents that, that kind of uh, panic. Um, and I'll show you later, you know, we've got tools to help assist with this as well. Um, and you know, if, once you kind of get a sense of, all right, this is a more manageable task now that it's delegated or, you know, I'm splitting the, the work and it's not as stressful. Um, uh, the next thing then to think about, of course, is what we're going to talk about. Uh, and so if you are um, in terms of content itself, uh, one thing that I, I like to encourage my, my teams, uh, my, my clients to do when they're trying to think of what type of content to come up with uh, is, uh, or at least to get a sense of what to go, what's going on, is ask your therapist what they're getting into over the weekend. For example, one of my clients has weekend warriors on their staff. Uh, they, spend, they spend a lot of their weekends dominating the trails in local parks, hiking, uh, running in local, uh, in local marathons, et cetera. And this is marketing gold for you as well. Um, your staff is part of your team. They are the people who uh, who are the patients are seeing. They are the usually the, the most long-lasting memory that they have. They're not really going to remember a Facebook post. They're going to remember that person that helped me walk better, the person who I can now keep up with the grandkids uh, because they helped me. Uh, so, so your patients have a very tangible connection to your therapist already, uh, and they more, more or not, they're, they're already associated with your brand. And so say, hey, you know, you're kind of a bit of the face of the company. You know, it could be a small portion if there's a bunch of therapists, but still, um, you know, you're part of this as well. If, you, if they're out and about on the weekends and they're, they're on the trails, they're, they're living an active life, they're doing kind of things that your brand would support and encourage, get them to take a selfie, get them to, to, to send over a picture, et cetera, and, and then spotlight them and celebrate that. Um, uh, and, you know, this, it's a great thing to keep, to build your brand as it's as a healthy, uh, full of exercise scientists who know how to keep the body moving and how to stay active. Um, and even if it's something as cheesy as the gym selfie, it's social media. It's not as, as kind of rigid as, you know, a website, which is very formal uh, for the most part. Um, and uh, it shows that your team practices what they preach. And people love seeing their Patients love seeing the people who made them feel better on social media. You get a lot of engagement like, oh, there's my therapist, or oh, I, I love that pic, et cetera. Um, and in that same vein, if your staff participates in volunteer or community events, these moments are just as marketable for your brand and, and build that human connection that I was talking about earlier, which kind of leads to my next point. You are not alone, and this isn't, uh, you know, like a, it's not as deep as it sounds. It's literally, you are not on an island. You are surrounded by plenty of, you're a small business surrounded by plenty of other small businesses in your community and organizations and parks and other types of things. 
you are in a space and you can utilize that for your marketing. Um, uh, one of the common mistakes I see in my in uh, clients who are providing content of their own is that they they keep their kind of all of their marketing content under the under their own roof, literally physically, like it's all under the same in the same lobby in the same gym, etc. Um, and you know, pictures of treatment, smiling front desk set, patient testimonials. Now, don't get me wrong, that content is amazing and awesome and really great for kind of showing off the clinical experience. But there is an opportunity to extend past that. Uh, and a past was like directly happening in terms of uh, what a service is like, a treatment is like. Um, uh, and and it's not necessarily something that you should ignore in your marketing. Uh, can, can it provide a more holistic sense of your brand and sense of, you know, you guys really going above and beyond being the people that uh, that your patients want to be a part uh, kind of come to. Um, uh, let, 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 let's see here. Um, oh, I lost my, lost my place. Sorry. Um, uh, and da, 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 da. so for example, um, uh, if, if, if you're, perf if you're in local marathons or running events, or if you volunteer, if you guys, uh, if you guys sponsor, uh, like potentially high school physicals or scholarship programs for a local, for one of the local high schools, those are really marketable things. It shows that you're invested in the community. And nowadays people love supporting, um, uh, their, uh, they love supporting other small businesses and en encourage that. That's not something that you shouldn't uh, you should lean into. Uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't hide away from. Um, let's see here. Uh, another great example. Let me see here. Uh, lunches from local businesses. Um, one thing that that in, in the world of social media marketing, especially if you guys are getting a team lunch and you get all like to go from this local cafe, take a picture, tag them on so social media, and watch the magic happen. Um, people uh, they will usually see it, share it then all of a sudden you are expanded into their network uh, and have new eyes on your brand who previously, especially if they didn't need PT or, or you know, or physio or, uh, or whatever they came to you for, uh, it basically can bring, can expose you to new people who are also already physically in your area. It's people who, oh, that, who follow that restaurant that's a block away. You know, you're not going to get, you know, people from, you know, the other side of the state. You're going to get people in your community that are already kind of invested and wanting to support you. Um, Da, 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 da. Um, and now remember, social media is different than other types of marketing arenas, um, mainly because because uh, things don't have to always pertain to you know the very stiff kind of physical therapy marketing. Um, as long as it's kind of contributing to your brand, as we are helping people, we are living active lives, we are making life better for people in our community, and we're part of a community. That all really contains uh, compounds into a holistic brand. Um, and, and if you're posting four times a week alongside practice motions, uh, content, uh, then, uh, you definitely have wiggle room to explore different types of content and themes within your community. Uh, don't be afraid in the realm of social media to be a little adventurous, to try something out. Uh, sometimes posts flop and that's fine. Like, all right, cool. No one liked this picture of cookies that we made for our front desk people. Sorry, no more cookie pictures. Um, you can, you can kind of uh, wiggle with things and, and adapt. Uh, it's, it's kind of fun. Um, and along with that, there's also a variety of other digital spaces um, uh, that you should definitely consider exploring. Now, now uh, these next few suggestions tend to require a little more hands-on time. Uh, so, you know, if you are, you know, the wearing a million different hats, and these types of things might be a little more advanced, uh, or you know, in it be saved for a time when you have a little more kind of uh, breathing room in these types of uh, responsibilities. Um, but Try to consider specific Facebook groups. Um, you might not personally be a big Facebook user, but there are there is still a huge uh, kind of community presence in Facebook. And Facebook groups themselves, I always recommend um, people searching groups in their area. Uh, now, Facebook groups. Uh, one thing I like about them, I'm in Richmond, Virginia. There's at least ten different uh, like weightlifting Facebook groups. Join join those. Say, hey, weightlifters, I'm at this uh, I'm at this local uh, you know physical therapy clinic. Uh, we help with all kinds of common injuries you guys experience as weightlifters. Um, uh, you know, if you guys are ever in need of anything, read, uh, message me and I'll see what I can do for you. Uh, just that level of finding those people who are both physically in your area and are already a very targeted uh, audience because they're already interested. They're already injury prone if they're going to be very athletic. And you can really kind of, it's already weeding out all the people who won't be relevant. It's, it's, it's just dense uh, like lead rich, uh, groups, uh, same kind of vibe, but, but within Reddit. Now, Reddit is definitely a little more nerdy, knock on wood. And I'm shaming myself here. 
Uh, but Reddit is a very robust uh, online community. It's like a message board um, where people can go in and in your community, there will be basically a, so I'll just use Richmond, Virginia as an example, because that's where I am. There is an, a Richmond, Virginia subreddit is what it's called. You can go in there and say, hey, uh, uh, basically just promote your own business. It's, it's basically just sharing yourself uh, and, and what you do and how you're here to help. Um, and since it's already concentrated within your geographic area, you know that it's going to be on more relevant eyes uh, and it's not going to be just strangers on the internet. It's strangers on the internet within like a, a five to 10 mile radius of you, which can be really, really helpful uh, in kind of weeding out uh, just all the noise on the internet and only and getting exposed to a more concentrated group of relevant people. Uh, and then small business associations, same kind of thing. Um, join them. If you're not in them, get the owner to, if, and if you aren't like the owner of your business, uh, get them to, to rub elbows with the other small business leaders in the community. Every community has small business associations. Um, this is obviously outside of the digital realm, but they do have digital presence as well. They have their own groups. Uh, some of them are even free to join online. So you can kind of pop in and say, hey, here's my business. Here's what we do. Um, and nothing uh, like nothing works better than uh, sharing um, basically small business supporting each other. It's the same thing as when you tag the other businesses on social media. Um, it's, it's a very kind of organic thing and people love to see it uh, as, as consumers, as, as Facebook users, they love, or Instagram users, they love to see when you get, a, when you, when you get shouted out by some other local organization they help with, um, local gyms as well. And they all, they tend to have Facebook groups also. Um, so, so think about the, uh, just all the other places where people are already kind of, they've already grouped themselves. They've already brought themselves together and are already kind of in your demographic of you know, we, we can help all of you people the minute you hurt yourselves or, you know, in either the athletic topics or for the small business associations. Um, that is just great across the board to help really embolden uh, and broaden all of those things. Um, and along with that, um, now I just threw, I know I threw some, uh, a bunch of ideas at you, but you also um, have a variety of tools that we provide you that can make a lot of this, of what I talked about easier for you. Um, uh, so using tools that we provide, uh, to, to kind of help with this. Now there's kind of three different things I'm gonna be showing today. Um, planning ahead with the business center, our monthly social media calendars, and then first, the, the most important one, training sessions for your team. So of course, and if you've been on, if, you, if you've been trained by any of us, you've seen this at least at some point, I highly recommend always, always revisiting this and, and uh, using this as much as you can. Um, in the business center, the social calendar tool is, the most helpful tool in terms of planning ahead. If you have one day a week to do admin work and you want to get more involved in social media, okay, queue up the entire next week on uh, on that one day where you can sit at the computer and then you don't have to think about it the rest of the week. Getting this kind of stuff off your back uh, and, and kind of chunking it out over time is gonna save you so much stress. Um, and along with that, um, you can use this to, co to collaborate. We can have a pretty, I, I, it's probably in, infinite, but I haven't really hit the limit. Uh, you can have a lot of users on your business center account. If it's if it's if you're the only person who has access to it right now, but you have a front desk person who could deal with socials, uh, or you know a few other people on your team who you would who you would benefit from collaborating in this kind of format, where you can all go in, drop in your post, call it a day, done. Let us know. We can make more and more accounts for you in the business center. Um, and then the next step, of course, oh not next step, but basically we can train them up on anything relevant as well. Um, and in that same vein, if you are, if you're trying to drink the, the custom content Kool-Aid, if you're trying to get in there and make more, uh, make more noise, um, on the internet, but now you're at the point of like writer's block where like, I don't really know what to talk about yet. And, you know, you could, your team might be, you know, a little boring that weekend, don't have any kind of hiking pictures or anything to kind of lean into. Um, we post, we provide these, uh, calendars for you on a monthly basis. Um, they should be in your base camp, ask your digital account manager where to find them in your base camp. Um, uh, if, you, if you haven't seen these before, we might also email these out. I'm not, I'm not too clear on how noisy we get with these, but I know they're they're available to you. Uh, every month we provide these to at least get to basically give you topics to touch on. So in this example, I have uh, this uh, this upcoming month, July treatment Thursday, every other Thursday, or behind the scenes uh, every other Friday. Basically, just ideas that we're providing to you on a monthly basis to get a sense of oh, we could talk about this, we could talk about that. Um, it's, you don't have to treat this as gospel. You can pick and choose what you like. This is a great starting point, especially if you aren't already in the habit of creating content and are just overwhelmed. If you're at the overwhelm stage, this calendar is going to be your best friend. Print it out, 
use it, and then adapt it to however you want it to, use, to, to be. Um, and then, of course, training sessions. So this is something that I know with my clients, I preach and encourage, um, and I hope you know you have access to, but all of the things we taught you when you onboard as a client, uh, we will refresh you uh, at any point that you want a, re a refresher uh, course on it. Uh, or if you're bringing in new people who you want to help kind of delegate and, and kind of lighten your workload, we'll train them too. I'll train your janitor. I don't care. As long as we can, th the more that we can empower and enable your team to do all the marketing that you are, you want to do, we will do it. We will help you out. Um, and so if that means, you know, training three training calls in one month, I'm going to be exhausted, but if it gets you, if it gets you where you need to be, I will do it uh, 100%. Um, so just if you ever want to train um, or revisit anything or delegate, reach out to your digital account manager. Um, and then, of course, custom content is not just for social media. All of the content that we or all of the, the marketing that we utilize um, can be heavily, heavily uh, benefited by your Custom content. Uh, if you if you have a newsletter with us, I know that you've probably heard it from your print account manager many a time. Your custom content always outperforms the stock content, and it's the same kind of mentality behind what I was explaining with socials. Is people really engage and connect with who they know and, and the the human element to it. Uh, so the more that you're able to provide, the better. Uh, these are just some examples of other print things that your custom copy can be incorporated to as well. Um, and then, oh, sorry. Uh, and then, so uh, uh, before we get to the questions, I do want to announce the winner for the uh, the Stat Tracker contest, and that is Kelsey Keen with Avenues Physical Therapy. Applause, applause. Uh, um, so, Kelsey, uh, we will be uh, reaching out to you, your digital account manager, uh, about getting the gift card to you. Um, and besides that, those that's kind of the general um, way, kind of my ideas of how to expand your kind of the traditional marketing bubble, uh, you know, getting you outside of the clinic um, and, uh, and kind of just leaning into the world around you to assist in your marketing. Uh, you know, it's, and it's really, that's really the key thing is like, you are not alone. You are not an Island. And I bet it, like, that's a strength. And that is something that, uh, that can be heavily leaned into. Um, now I'm going to go off full screen. So apologies if my camera gets weird for a second. Um, there we go. Uh, now, does anyone have any questions? You can either drop it in the chat or just unmute yourself, with however you prefer. Beautiful. Love silence. All right. Um, so if anyone does wind up having questions or you're having technical difficulties um, and you can't you know, pipe in right now, no sweat. Um, simply just, uh, you can message me or email me at graham at practice staff promotions.com or you can talk to your digital account manager. They, they are filled with great ideas just like mine. Um, uh, and, uh, and so if you, um, oh, thanks, Angel. Oh, Angel just messaged. Uh, thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate the love. Um, if you guys have any other questions, um, you know where to find me and, oh, da -da -da -da. is there a limit to how many people can have access to the business center social calendar? Uh, D Daniel, Beef, uh, not to my knowledge, um, at least not to my knowledge. Uh, if that is the case, obviously your digital account managers will let you know if you're, if you like, Hey, here's 20 people to add. Um, I've had up to, I think up to 10 with one of my clients. So I've seen it go pretty large. Um, and if you have that many people on your team, maybe that kind of delegation might be a little, uh, intense. Um, but yeah, uh, in general, it's, you can add uh, a variety of users as well. Uh, and your digital account manager can assist with that if you have any questions. And kind of in that vein, um, uh, with the business center, you know, there's a lot to it. There's the social media, there's the reviews, there's the SEO stuff. If you only want people to learn to know about the SEO, to the social media stuff versus the other things, we can train them just on that. And basically, say you know we can kind of guide them to where they're going to need to go versus anything else. Um, oh, another question: How much posting is too much? Should I post every day? And what kind of socials attract patients? That's what I really want. All right. Um, so posting too much is um, you know daily can work. Um, you know. E Five days, I think, is a is a good number, uh, both to keep it, you know, within breathing room, um, but also if you if you are able to do seven day, seven days a week, go for it. Sure, um, maybe do six because we're going to be posting that once a once a month uh, or once a week as well. Um, uh, time of day, I would recommend uh, lunch ish. You know, really between eleven to three, you're set. You're fine. You're going to hit uh, most of the dashboards at that point. Um, you know, maybe not uh, avoid like the six a.m.s or you know dinner time. Um, so really midday is ideal. Um, uh, and then the type of the kind of socials that attract patients, 
Uh, so in terms of recurring patients, your reactivated patients, past patients, um, it's going to be your your in-house content, your, the stuff that you you have to make people like, oh, I love them. Um, uh, and that, that really helps retain those people, keep them engaged, interested, keeps you top of mind. Uh, and then uh, this kind of second uh, facet of that is for uh, for new patients, but like brand new to you uh, patients, um, informative things as well. So, you know, I'm not saying all just, oh, do fluff and selfies, definitely do, just, that is not the case. Uh, uh, but like a peppering in of, of kind of technical things, informative things, that is really effective. Uh, and in terms of what really, in terms of socials turns things around is a call to action. That's really what you're gonna want um, in, in that type of thing is, uh, and, and that's kind of so social best practices, which I didn't really touch on in this in this presentation. Um, but making sure that you always can kind of lead them to the next step. Book appointment, contact us, or if it's an event, sign up here. Um, it, it, especially if the content is relevant. Obviously, if it's you know a staff lunch picture, you know, you know like we love our local cafe. Click here to request an appointment. Eh, that might be a stretch. But in general, um, that's a, it's a good that's a good kind of thing to keep in mind. Um, any other questions? All right, lovely friends. Um, ooh, should I make a Twitter account? That's a great one. Uh, now, Twitter is tricky. Twitter is probably the most involved platform that that we that you can like utilize. Um, if you are, it can't hurt if you don't kind of put too much pressure on yourself about the Twitter. Honestly, um, mainly Twitter is a place where people go and scream into the void to be pretty like curt about it. Uh, some people do utilize it. They post on the Twitter. It is it is effective uh, if they are also present on Twitter, you know, able to engage, respond, retweet, uh, and not just post. It's, it's very, like, the world of Twitter is not built out for, like, passive kind of billboard-style content. Um, it's it's meant for responding, engaging, uh, and and kind of it, there, there is a much more involvement required from it. Um, if you still at least want to make a Twitter just so you can have content built out, go for it. That can be helpful. Um, but in terms of getting leads from it, unless you're able to really get pushing on it uh, and, and have someone there to to engage with users on Twitter and kind of funnel them over into your to other calls to action, it probably is going to not be not dead in the water, but not as effective as you would hope it to be, um, if that makes sense. Okay, I think we're good. Uh, so um, uh, this meeting will be recorded uh, and we'll be, we'll be distributing it out as well. So in case you want to refresh um, or if you want me to send the slides over, I can do that too. Um, I see a few of my clients on here. I'll, if you have any questions, feel free to just message me. Um, but besides that, uh, thank you all for joining me. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules to, to hopefully kind of think bigger picture, kind of expand uh, outside of just what's under your roof. That's really the key thing that I'm trying to hit here. Um, uh, and besides that, uh, have a lovely day. Thank you all.